idea of what they're doing, but the kids, the kids, I think, think about how you were when you were 18 years old. And that, you know, the things that you were interested in, and so you have no idea of what was really going on in the world. You had no idea of what the history of arms trades were, all of which was dependent upon somehow getting war started to get more, nothing, all this knowledge is 18 years old, what does a kid know? And yet he's drawn into it. And he pulls the trigger. But the thing about Trinity Site is, it makes us realize <clears throat> someone had to make the trigger. Someone had to make the gun. Someone had to modify it. Someone really had to make it good. Someone had to make the weapon. Someone had to use high, high intelligence. here is the Manhattan Project. It was the maximal use of human intelligence at the highest level at the time. The most expensive scientific project in the history of the world and technological project. 
even today, 99.9999% of the people can't understand how an atomic bomb is made. They just don't, we just don't know. And way back then, in 45 or 45, that, 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 that tiny little, tiny little group of people that had absorbed so much knowledge from the past, because no one learns everything by themselves. They build a Pythagoras and Von Elton. They took that knowledge and wisdom. People worked for decades, for, for centuries, millennia, bringing together huh? Kepler and Newton and Einstein and, as we said, Pythagoras and so forth. And they took it and they, what they gave? They used it to make an instrument of massive destruction. But does it make any difference whether that knowledge is used to make an instrument of massive destruction or just to refine how completely and exceptionally you can fire a pistol and get it to hit the guy right in the head? It's all the same thing. It's taking a tremendous gift of God, human intelligence, and using it to do evil human destruction. Now think about it. We got the seven capital sins, which pretty much all religions know, you know. Uh, anger, hatred, revenge, jealousy, lust, envy, you know, the seven capital sins. <clears throat> anyone, anyone involved in any one of those seven capital sins is using this magnificent mind that God gave them execute evil. Whether it's lust, whether it's envy, whether it's jealousy, resentment, you name it. Anger. They're thinking it through. Like we know, you know, uh, part of the reason it's so hard to, uh, to, to um, find people who are engaged in criminal activity is they, they become masters at it. And the, uh, the average person doesn't even think of that kinds of things. Same thing with people committing pedophilia. They become masters at, at, at hiding, and they learn. They've used the, the power of the mind to figure out how to do evil and avoid being caught. This is what the Manhattan Project is about. This is part of what Trinity Site is about. It's about human beings willing to turn themselves over to, the to, to be instruments of evil. Instruments, <coughs> instruments of human destruction. And so we can focus on the bomb, which we do, huh? but the bomb just doesn't happen on July 16th, 1945, as we know. It's the best minds <coughs> in the world coming together up around Los Alamos for three years and thinking and working hard and using this mind that they have and then they, to do what? human beings. But that goes on right to this minute. Right to this second. There's almost not a college or university faculty in the world that will hire you if you're not willing to take funds from the Pentagon. <coughs> You've got to be willing to use your brain to kill people or you cannot, for all practical purposes in a major university, even get a position. If you say, I want to go and, and I, I want to deal with all the blood and so forth in the body, they'll say, fine. But the document you sign says, anything you get can be turned over to the military, anything you... I know a man, as a matter of fact, was a student of mine years ago at Notre Dame, had his doctorate in, in, uh, had his doctorate in uh, aeronautical engineering, and... Um, He was about to get, he should have had tenure at Michigan State because he did everything that he needed. And they wouldn't give him tenure because he wouldn't do work for the military. Which means work for learning how to destroy people. Which means work using your brain, your mind, your logic, all the time you put into it to help kill people. And that's that, that would be the same thing if it were any evil. Any evil. Take greed. Same thing. Take it. 
you got one person dying every nine seconds of starvation in the world. And you've got people using their brains to figure out how to grab more than they possibly could use. And there's still more, just insatiable, the appetite. And they're using their minds all the time, brilliantly, to pile up and fill their bonds and fill their bonds while people starve to death down here. And so, and so it seems to me um, <clears throat> that one of the purposes of the Trinity site that we may think about is why is it that this is such a such a iconic symbol of evil, and it is an iconic symbol of evil. What is not God's will is evil. And so, and so, Judaism and Christianity is not all sites they like. We are made in the image and likeness of God. Once we say, once we say that Jesus, that Jesus is the revealer of God and God's will to the man, once we say you are the Messiah, the Christ, the Son, the living God, that doesn't put us in a particular church. That puts us in a particular way that we have to be now. Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Word of God, the incarnation of God. Therefore, this is the image of God as it looks on earth. The ultimate image, God's own image of himself on earth, Jesus.
picture that way. going on out there in 
You are not living in the spirit of God if you're killing people, period. If you're engaged in violence. Whether you're doing it for the government, whether you're doing it for the mafia, whether you're doing it for yourself, you're not living in the image of God. And the church says so. There is no violence in God. The gospel says so. That being the case, that being the case, what are we doing when we not only go and do this sort of thing, engage in violence, but we bless it? We're giving false witness. We're telling people that something is the image of God that isn't, it's the opposite. We are leading people to the abyss. Not just one, but a lot. Now, I'm not saying that you have to believe that God is love. God is Father of all. Jesus teaches. God is nonviolent because Jesus teaches. He leads to see the Father. I'm saying if you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the Living God, then you have to believe it. Then you have to believe it. And therefore, for my almost 50 years career doing this, I've hardly ever addressed the same moral arguments. It's always been Christians. Because God has a plan. Do 
doing evil. That's thinking is good. Now it's one thing if you don't believe that God is love, Father of all, non-biased. If you don't believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the Living God. But if you do, then it's another thing altogether. Then you're not being truthful with God or truthful with yourself. You're not being truthful about what is for you the truth. And that's dangerous. That in any religion, not being truthful with God about what is the truth is for you. It's dangerous. And so I raise this only because only because what's going on out here in July 19th? going to match the Pentagon budget of trillions, really? How, how are you going to match the newspapers and corporate mass media? And it's not even irrelevant. This evening, after the mass, we begin Eucharistic adoration. I replaced, as you know, the massive monstrance of a, of a uh, <coughs> holder for, for the uh, consecrated bread and wine, body and blood of Christ. We don't need big. We don't need gold. We need the wooden cross. It's little. It takes a lot of courage to go up to your parish priest and say, look, I don't know where the Catholic process is. Look at the parish priest and say, you can't say that because that's justifying violence and Jesus is not violent. You shouldn't be saying that in church. You shouldn't be teaching that in church. Development does not depend upon the seed itself after that point. What's going on around here? Everything, the rain, the sun, all the trees are dead. My business is fidelity, God's business is success. I plant the seed, little seed of Christ like truth and Christ like love. the reason for replacing the massive monstrance with this little one is we can even Jesus only did little. Did little. You know he's about five foot ten they say about six foot whatever the case may be. He could only walk eighteen inches at a time. He could only heal this one or that one. He didn't heal the whole world. And of course you can't be any little than dying on the cross outside Jerusalem and having no no whole Religious structure, or a hierarchy, whatever you want to call them, hate you. That's little. Love is good. I have to forgive them for they know not what they do. He loves them, and that's the key. The key is not the power of the world. 
where all the keys to power of God are. And that is the only, let me say, there is no salvation outside the love of God. There's no way to salvation outside of the love of God, and that is a non-violent love. There is no violence in God. And you and I are gifted in the image and likeness of God, we love to and be good. Plant those seeds. If we don't plant the seeds, we don't know who we want to receive what they're supposed to receive. It's made for a generation to come. But we do know this. Those seeds of Christ-like love in the place of life, in the place of justified life, seeds are planted properly. The last 17 hundred years of the church has sought to stop the non-violence and begin to justify the law. If those seeds were planted properly in the last 17 years, the Trinity site never would have been. There's a lot of other horrible things like inquisitions and slavery. Then 